Democratic candidates, and she's a member of our delegation. So welcome, Ashley Judd. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good morning, Tennessee. Are y'all fired up? Are you fired up? Have you said that yet today? Well, let's say it again. Fired up. Thank you. I needed that. That is better than caffeine. Well, thank you all so much for having me. It is an absolute pleasure and honor to be able to visit with my co-home delegation. So before I start, let's just get a few things out of the way. I am a fan of the Tennessee Volunteers and the Vanderbilt Commodores, except when you're playing Kentucky. Can that work for you? <laughs> thank you. And also, I remember so clearly the moment when I realized that the Volunteer State is in fact my home. Of course, my people come from Eastern Kentucky for many, many generations, and I've learned recently that they were across the border quite a lot in South, Eastern, and Western Tennessee. And I'm so proud that I've discovered I have a 12 times great grandmommy who was full-blooded Cherokee. And when I did that program, Who Do You Think You Are? She was one of the most interesting people they discovered in my genealogy, and I'm so proud of her, and I'm proud to be here today with a delegation that is making history in the state of Tennessee because it is the most diverse and the most inclusive and very representative of our population for the first time. And my mama pursuing her dream of becoming a country music star and supporting my sister's extraordinary voice moved us to Williamson County in 1979. So I started going to Williamson County schools and then I graduated in Kentucky and went to UK. But there was this moment when I was about 18 years old and sister was on the road and she called me, you know, back when cell phones were that big. And she said, Lordy, I can't wait to get home. And it just clicked, Tennessee, is home. And I thank you all so much for accepting me in the party and folding me in as one of your own because working at the grassroots level is something that I absolutely love. I've been taught that what comes from the head goes straight over the head and what comes from the heart goes straight to the heart. And that's part of what I want to talk with you about this morning. Each of us can be endowed with a personal narrative that we can share with others in our community about what President Obama has done for us in these last four years and share the high expectations and hope of what can be accomplished with four more years. So for example, with Obamacare, I met a woman who was so ashamed to share this in a group, but she knew it took the guts of sharing a personal narrative to be able to reach those in her community who were undecided or unclear about the President's accomplishments. She took her child for the first time in her child's life as a result of health care reform to the pediatrician for the first time. And yet there she was, a lifelong Democrat, a supporter of this administration, and even she didn't know that there would be no copay and no deductible. With all the obfuscation of the facts, with all of the distortions, we have to take the truth and the honesty and the accomplishments back. And that is so much of what this convention is about, as opposed to last week's convention, where they even admitted that to tell the truth would be political suicide by their own hand. So let's just talk about health care reform for a little while longer because I think it's pretty fantastic that 350,000 children in the state of Tennessee cannot be denied health care because they have pre-existing medical conditions. And there are 64,000 young people in Tennessee who now have insurance on their parents' policies. So those young people will not go broke or they will not go in debt if they have a health care emergency and they can focus on building their careers and starting their own income generation. And that's how we stimulate our local economies. 83,000 Tennesseans with traditional Medicaid, excuse me, Medicare, saved an average of $590 a month on their prescriptions. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. 
in a state that, as ours does, still unfortunately rank rather low on the national indices of poverty. That's a lot of money. Additionally, and this is one I love because it gets into the millions, and it's about health care companies giving rebates to consumers, us, when they have not been spending that money appropriately. So 240,000 Tennessean residents with private insurance coverage are receiving over $28 million in rebates. Take that. <laughs> Health care is the building block of all sustainability. If I am not well, I cannot go to work. If I am unwell, I don't have the energy to care properly for my children. And also, if I am not well, it's just a drain on my emotional resources. And so the idea that health care is finally accessible to all, that it is illegal for women to be charged more for the same services, is good for the state of Tennessee. And it's up to each of us to share that information embedded within our personal stories to our neighbors and to our communities. Because that's ultimately how we will spread the hope of President Obama's next four years. We will build from the person out, not from the top down. And I would like to say something about one of the great divisive lightning rod issues in our country today, the sad and difficult topic of abortion. I would imagine that even in this room, even us as Democrats, should I say we? I went to Harvard, I should know that. <laughs> I'm talking Tennessee. Even we as Democrats may have varying opinions on that. A fifth of all Americans believe that there should be no abortion at all, no exceptions, including to save the life of the mother or in a case of rape or incest. And a fifth of all Americans believe that all abortion should be legal in all cases. I would imagine that those of us here in this room are somewhere in the middle of that. But what I've always felt and what I've always thought was perfectly logical is that if we can prevent unintended pregnancy, we make the need for abortion obsolete. So when we empower girls and women and boys and men with medically accurate sex education, with the full basket of modern family planning choices, we prevent unintended pregnancy. And when we do that, we finally manifest the sage and pragmatic words of our 42nd President of the United States, abortion should be safe, it should be legal, and it should be rare. And I have to say, about that for me, there is no controversy. And that's become one of my slogans of this campaign. There's no controversy. In, in making family planning available. Are you feeling me on this? No controversy. And yet we know that the Republican Party at this time has been absolutely hijacked by the extreme right, by those on the very far end of that spectrum, and they would not only make abortion illegal to save the life of the mother, so you want to if a mother already has children, you're comfortable making her children orphans? And I lost my train of thought, because that to me is just so awful. <laughs> that is just so awful. Oh, I was talking about how, you know, even Gloria Steinem has said that the Republicans need to take their party back. So there is extremism there. About, about making abortion illegal, even in the case of rape and incest, and to save the life of the mother. And there is extremism in even denying women access to family planning. And we have to stand up and make sure that that doesn't happen. We've got generations of girls in my family who got pregnant as teenagers and out of wedlock. And frankly, they didn't even know how it happened. They really didn't. And you know, the boy didn't either. <laughs> it was confusing. 
And we just do not, we should not live in that kind of ignorance anymore, particularly in our beautiful state. So I'm just going to close with this. I believe in Tennesseans. I believe in your ability to find a way that this Obama administration has touched you personally. And I believe in your ability as a storyteller, of which we have a long and fine tradition. So go, share your stories, do so with the dignity and respect that is becoming of Tennesseans, and help make sure that after this president began his administration just trying to stop the bleeding, to do hemorrhage control and triage in our economy, that he can have another four years of manifesting the hope and the change and the promise that is the absolute mandate of our beautiful republic. So do the work, Tennessee. A lot of y'all are going over to North Carolina as volunteers. That's a wonderful thing. It may not happen in this election, but I do believe we can turn Tennessee blue at some point in the near future. And you wouldn't be here if you didn't already know this. It's up to each one of us. It's up to each one of us. So put out your yard signs, even if somebody runs them over. <laughs> put on your bumper sticker, even if you get a little salute on 65. <laughs> and know that as you are together here in this room, when we go back home to Tennessee, we Democrats are not alone. We have each other, and together, we can make change possible. Thank you for letting me be with you today. Thank you.